Hello everyone. Good morning. I am Varun. In this demo, I would like to show a synchronous interface between a third party system and SAP ERP. PO acts as a middleware. PO stands for SAP Process Orchestration and it's a middleware from SAP. It's a it basically acts as a middleware between SAP ERP and the various third party systems. In this particular interface, a third party system sends a Rust JSON format message. Okay, before going that, I would like to highlight that PO publishes the Rust web service. It has the adapter through which a uh, REST web service is published. The third party system can call this REST web service using the URL and the user ID password. Okay, so basically, with after PO publishes the REST web services, we give it to the third party system saying that you have to call this particular URL using the user ID password and the message format or the JSON format has to be in this particular way or in this particular type. So this is the JSON, JSON format which the third party system sends. So once the third party system sends the JSON format, there is a Rust adapter at PO which converts the JSON format to an XML message. This X, XML message is then submitted to proxy which is the XML format understood by SAP. SAP reads this proxy request, processes it, and then sends the response back again to PO. PO again converts this proxy XML to a JSON format through REST adapter and sends it back to the third party system. So this, is, this was my overview about this interface. So let's proceed into further technical details. Uh, before I proceed into further details, I assume that the viewer of this demo is already aware of the basics of PO, such as building of the data types, message types, and message map and operation map and service interface. Also, the configuration of uh, inbound processing ICO, which involves inbound processing receiver, receiver interface and outbound processing. I mean, I'll be going, I'll be running through a developed object, which I've already built. I'll not be building those objects now. I'll be just running through uh, the objects which are already developed. So except that you should be aware of the creation of the data type and ICO or the viewer of this demo should be aware of the basics of the SAP PO. All right. So that was about my introduction. So this is uh, the interface flow and these are the basics which the a viewer should already be aware. Now let's proceed to the ESR objects. In the ESR, I've already created a data type which is a request uh, please hold on for a few seconds okay this is the request which I've already created it's a complex data type with various child elements and this is the response from SAP okay for this request data types uh, I've created the message type, message type request and the message type response. This is the message type request I've created wherein I configure the request data type. The next step I do is configure the outbound and inbound service interfaces. The outbound service interface is a synchronous which we mentioned here and we configure the request and the response. Here we give the message types which we have just created in the previous steps. 
Similarly, we configure the inborn service interface wherein I provide the request and response and mention the inborn service interface as inborn and the mode as synchronous. The next step is to creation of the message mapping wherein the first message I map the request to request uh, please hold on uh, for a few seconds until the message map opens uh, if you see this message map I basically map my request to request it's basically one to one mapping Similarly, I map my response to response. It's basically a one to one. This is a response from the SAP. And last step in the operation mapping, I configure the outbound service interface, inbound service interface. In the request tab, I give the message mapping, sales order request to request. And in the response tab, I give the response mapping so this is about my ESR objects coming to my configuration objects I created a configuration scenario in that configuration scenario I've created an integration configuration and so I'll be running through the rest center adapter this is the most important step if you open if you open my rest adapter What all the things I've configured here? Okay. The rest, I've selected the adapter type as rest and the option as sender. Then in the general tab, the data format I've selected as JSON. This basically tells that the third party system sends the format in a JSON format. The JSON format basically looks like this. So the basically a third party system has to send this JSON format. The next is the character set. Uh, I've selected HTTP content type as header. Uh, now here have various options such as manual value, custom HTTP header, get value. I've chosen HTTP content type header. The next step is I have to select the option convert to XML. What it basically does is this X, uh, JSON format is converted to XML by the rest sender channel. Then I select the log JSON message and also Add wrapper element. Next, I've select the message type which will be used as a request. So, whatever JSON message that is sent is converted into this particular message type or message format on the namespace, and the and this further process to proxy. Okay, if you, if I go down. One has to select the quality of service as best effort as this is a synchronous message. And the data format, which is the output format, again we have to select the JSON and we have to select the options convert XML payload to JSON. And I've checked the option log JSON message. That's it. So these are the options which I've selected in my general tab data format character set element name element namespace convert to xml log json message add wrapper element and if i just scroll down quality of service as best effort data format as json character set again convert xml payload to json and next go to the channel selection okay here we have to give the endpoint url uh, this has to be unique i mean if you if we have various interfaces which use rest then this endpoint url has to be unique for each interface so i've given in my 
case, I've given this endpoint URL as I discount. Next, uh, the URL pattern just leave as it is. Do not select anything. Uh, the rest operation also. I'm just leaving the default, which is the HTTP operation. Uh, I'm not selecting anything here. Operation determination or here also HTTP result checker. I'm not using anything. Error handling also. I'm not doing anything. So this is about the configuration of REST sender adapter. This is very important step. If you don't configure this particular scenario or, or the, the the steps are mentioned just now then one will get a error while processing the message okay before going further also how this rest uh, i would like to highlight how this rest adapter makes our life uh, very easy uh, assume if we don't have this rest adapter then the next question is can we process a REST JSON message? Yes, we can process. How? We have to either go for a Java mapping or XSLT mapping. So if you are going for a Java mapping, then one has to be very good in the coding of Java. So these all steps are bypassed or we don't have to get into details of building a java map with the rest adapter rest adapter internally takes care of all these conversions it converts the json format to an xml message and sends it to the uh, target message in this scenario it's a proxy again the response from the uh, sap is again converted back to a json format by this rest adapter so this rest adapter greatly simplifies or greatly saves the time of a developer and he can just concentrate on the mapping all right so that's about the rest adapter the next are the straightforward i'm configuring my sap system and I, uh, here i'm providing the operation map which we have configured in the esr and in the outbound processing, I'm configuring the proxy receiver, which is a SOAP. When I double click on this proxy receiver, I'm calling the URL, I'm calling the CP system using the URL. I'll be using this particular endpoint URL. I'll be using the user ID password. I'll be mentioning the client. So this is about the configuration of ICO. The most important step is the configuration of the REST adapter. The rest all are straightforward. Okay, so now the configuration is done. How to, okay, now the next step is how do we, uh, or how do we test internally how do i test internally before i k uh, before i say that the webs uh, the rest web service is ready to be consumed by the third party so i mean we have to test internally and check everything is working then only we can go and tell to the third party systems that the rest web service is ready to be consumed so how do i do that uh, okay if you see this is the XML message, uh, this is the XML message in my payload. Okay, this is the X control C. If I just go to my operation mapping in the test tab, so this is something has gone wrong. Let me do the So in the message wrap, the request message map, or you can also go to the operation map. Let me open the operation map. Go to test tab. Go to source. So this is my payload. When I execute this, it converts this request to another request and sends it to the proxy. Now, 
a third party system will call using a JSON format. So basically this XML message has to be converted into a JSON format. So how to how to test or how to get this JSON format? Uh, basically, uh, currently I'm not able to access. Okay, let me see if it's working. You can go to Google and type XML to JSON. Shit. XML to JSON. Okay, there are various websites which help you to convert the XML message to JSON. Uh, okay. Uh, currently, there's some issue with the website. I'm I'm not able to log into the website. Uh, what I suggest is you can go to this XML and you paste this particular XML in this link, and this website will convert this XML message to JSON format, which is in this format. Okay. Also, please note that when you convert this, uh, I mean, because I'm not able to open this, I'm not able to open this. I'll show you afterwards. Uh, okay. Using this website, I converted the XML message to a JSON format. So this is how my JSON format looks like. Now I have the JSON format. The next step is to, you should have a Postman. One can download a Postman client. It's basically a REST client used to test the REST web services. So I've downloaded the Postman. You can just go to google.com and download this Postman client. And once you install it, you will get something like this. So first you have to choose the option post. All right. In the post, you have to give the URL. So you please take note of this. This is my system URL until the rest adapter. Until the rest adapter, it's a system URL. Then at the end, you have to give the I discount, which is mentioned in the rest sender adapter. If you open this rest sender adapter, there was a step to configure the endpoint URL. And in the channel selection, I've configured the specified endpoint. I've given this as I discount. The same name has to be given here. So this URL I've entered here. All right. Also, any PI system will have a authorization. So go to the click on the authorization tab. Click on basic authorization. Uh, please mention the user ID passwords. Okay, after mentioning the user ID passwords, go to body, select raw, and select the type as JSON format, application forward slash JSON. And here, please provide the JSON message, which the third party system will send. So after you enter the JSON format, just click on send. And here you see the response as 200, which means we got the response back from SAP. What is the response? If you go here and click on body or what is that? Okay, just scroll down. So this is the response which I've got back from SAP. So it's basically sending that this customer record does not exist. So it's sending some response back from SAP. So a third party system will see this particular message. So this is how we should test a REST web service internally before communicating with the third party. Now we are getting a successful response for the request. Then we can go and tell to the a uh, third party system to call this particular URL. We have to provide the user ID password and the JSON format, a sample JSON format. So then the third party system will make use of this sample message format and provide the, uh, send the data. 
I'll again show you. In the, you have to select the post because we are expecting a response. In the authorization, select the basic authorization. Provide the username, password, and in the body, uh, select raw and select JSON format. Give the input data and click on send. And you can see the response here. And the response is 200. If you scroll down, please scroll down and you can see the response, which is the response from the SAP. You can also check in the SXMB Money. If you go to the latest message, and this is the SXMB Money message. If you just go here, so this is the response. You can also, I mean, if I click on this one, you can see the uh, request this is the request message which I have sent and this is the response which I am getting so this is how uh, you should configure a synchronous REST web service to proxy interface the last step I mean before I sign off I want I want to show how to uh, convert this XML message to a JSON format for that let me just disconnect from my VPN Okay, uh, if I show that end step, it will be very easy for you to do this particular interface. Uh, let me just disconnect. Okay, okay, the my VPN has disconnected. Now let me show you. Uh, you remember I've asked you to go to uh, Google. Okay. Uh, in the Google just type XML to JSON and there are various websites which help you to convert this format just click on converter online okay so this is the message it says here you have to enter your XML message so input XML you just type your input XML Control A, Control C, Control V, and just click. Okay, so click this particular arrow and it will convert to a JSON format. All right, so now we have the JSON format. Please note that one, one more thing I would like to highlight is in the sender channel we will already provide the message format which is the message type format so you have to remove the segment which is present in this node so empty sales order request right this we have already configured in the sender channel so sender channel expects the message which is underneath this so you have to just remove this header and just remove the last flower bracket so this is how your message should look like just take note of this point all right so that's it from my end hope this demo will be helpful for the people who want to configure uh, interface using sap po as a middleware between a third party system and the sap uh, that's it from my end thank you